Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at alternatives to the Hyperdimension Neptunia games. Like with every video game series, there are many reasons why people dislike or like certain series. Video games are a multifaceted experience, and everything from the largest right down to the smallest detail influences whether we like or dislike certain things. In this video, I want to explore various themes present in the Neptunia franchise and recommend some alternatives that have those themes in common. That way I can hopefully cover a lot of situations. So whether you're a fan of Neptunia and want to play something similar, or dislike Neptunia because there's something specific about the franchise that keeps you from playing the games, hopefully this video will help you find something fun to play. Also keep in mind that I can only really comment on games I've played before. So if I didn't mention something that you think would be a good fit, it just means I probably haven't played it. That includes some really well-known JRPGs, by the way. I'm going to organize my recommendations based on various ways we could branch out from the franchise. In terms of gameplay, there's three predominant styles, turn-based like the main titles, real-time hack and slash like Neptunia U, Blonde vs. Zombies, and to some extent Four Goddesses Online, and strategy RPGs like Hyper Devotion Noir. For producing perfection, I don't really have anything to say other than probably any other um, rhythm game in existence is probably better. And when it comes to the simulation aspect of that game, most people into that stuff probably already know what to look for. And lastly, let's face it, art style as well as fan service are two very big reasons why someone might be into Neptunia. So we're going to look at other fan service oriented titles, even if they share little in terms of gameplay. We're going to start with games that share some commonalities with the main series of Neptunia games. Honestly, turn-based RPGs from Japan aren't exactly uncommon. A bit like a mid-2000s Corolla, one could be going right past you, but you might not even notice because it blends in with all the others. But there are games that very much play like Neptunia because the same people made them. One of them is Fairy Fencer F. Not only do they share the same uh, developers, but even art style because Tsunako designed the characters as well. On a really basic level, you can imagine Fairy Fencer F as being Hyperdimension Neptunia, but redone in a fantasy setting. There are other bits that differentiate it, but it largely feels the same to play. Unlike in Neptunia, Fairy Fencer F has a guy as the main protagonist. I know that there are people who don't like the idea of playing another game that's almost the same as, you know, most other Neptunia games. But for those who like the gameplay, but don't like Neptunia's story, characters, or setting, then this is a really good alternative. There's two versions of the game. Fairy Fencer F is available on the uh, PS3 and PC, but an expanded remake called Fairy Fencer F Advent Dark Force was released on the PS4, uh, PC, and Nintendo Switch. I only played the normal version, but both have good reviews on Steam. The remake does have more roots, it seems, and it's only a few more dollars on Steam, which makes it seem like a better choice. If that isn't enough, there's another game made by the same developers, and also the same character designer. And that game is called Trinity Universe. But it's not like this game is another game based on Neptunia. It's actually the other way around. Trinity Universe came first, and Neptunia was conceived afterwards. Trinity Universe ended up being dressed up in some sci-fi clothing, and it became the first Neptunia game. Now, I'm not going to blame you if you don't recognize the gameplay. Most people's introduction to Neptunia were probably one of the Rebirth remakes or even the spin-offs. You can't move around during battle, just jump around with, you know, one of those weird animations that this game has, and dungeons are largely empty, and you encounter enemies based on distance traveled rather than, um, you know, when you touch them. That's just one of the many ways Trinity Universe and the first Hyperdimension Neptunia differ to the other NEP games. Trinity Universe isn't a refined game at all, and while I don't recommend it to most people, it might still be worth checking out for curiosity's sake if you can get it for a really cheap price. It was a crossover project between Nipponichi, Gust, and Idea Factory, and while it does include a lot of original characters, you'll also find some from the Atelier and Disgaea series. This game was only released on the PlayStation 3. Speaking of the Atelier series, let's talk about the Atelier series. It might not be an obvious pick, but I think the series has some unique things about it that some might appreciate. This is one of those franchises that's actually been around for a while, spanning many different uh, console generations. I personally have experience with three games, which are often referred to as the Arlen Trilogy. They are Atelier Rorona, Atelier Totori, and Atelier Meruru. You'll have to excuse the pronunciation there. Originally PS3 games, 
They were also later released on the Vita, and as of last December, they were also available on Steam, though they're kind of expensive in my opinion. All three games follow the usual JRPG style, with various dungeons you can select. Coming into contact with an enemy initiates a turn-based battle, where you do the usual turn-based battle things. But there are things which are quite different. First of all, the protagonists aren't usually faced with some gigantic world-affecting problem, but rather the storylines are based on more personal and down-to-earth goals. There is a time element to these games. Uh, you only have a set amount of time before the game ends, and things like traveling and crafting actually take up time. As someone who generally dislikes games with time limits, I don't really dislike it here. Why that is, I'm not really sure. I don't like alchemy in games either, yet here it's integral to the game, like that's the thing, you're an alchemist. You'll be going around killing monsters, but also gathering ingredients to craft more things. I'm guessing the reason I like these games is because it doesn't feel like most other JRPGs in terms of the presentation and the story. I enjoyed the fact that all games take place in the same region, well, these three games anyways, and you get to see old locations and previous characters again in later games. Maybe it's just me being sentimental, but that's just how I feel about it. There's an interesting way how the game treats the passing of time. The Arlen trilogy will soon not be a trilogy anymore, as a new sequel called Atelier Lulua, The Scion of Arland will come out soon on Steam, PS4, and Switch. Scion of Arland sounds a bit like a dealership that could have existed when Scion was still a thing. Let's take a look at the hack and slash games now. The company Tamsoft is responsible for all the hack and slashers of the franchise. Neptunia U, Blonde vs. Zombies, and Four Goddesses Online. Those kind of games are a bit of a specialty for Tamsoft, one series Tamsoft has made a lot of games for is Senran Kagura. I'm sure a lot of you already know about this, uh, since there seems to be a lot of crossover between the two franchises. Senran Kagura Shinobi vs. and its successor Estival vs. are both hack and slash games. In terms of gameplay, both feel like more complete versions of Neptunia U and Megatech Mansion. Gameplay is noticeably deeper and more complex, and the graphics are, in my opinion, a real step up. One thing I didn't like about Neptunia U and Megatag Mansion is how repetitive all these different stages were. Senran Kagura is more balanced in that regard, and the levels just look so much nicer. There is a somewhat similar feel to how all the games control, which I think is a good thing. Senran Kagura's fan service is a whole notch above Neptunia. It's way more blatant, but it's also done in a humorous way. Senran Kagura games, of course, have their own storylines as well, featuring the stories of various groups of ninja girls. Like Neptunia, it's one of those series that likes to fluctuate between serious and lighthearted moments. I should mention that these games are a bit closer to how Nepu and Megatag mentioned are, but fans of Four Goddesses Online might still enjoy Senran Kagura games because of the real-time battle aspect. Shinobi vs. is available on the Vita and PC, while Estival vs. is on the Vita, PC, and PS4. There are side-scrolling 3DS games available too, you want to check those out, but it's worth noting that the first game of the series will be released on PS4 and PC soon. It might be out already depending when this video comes out. Valkyrie Drive is another one worth looking at. It's not made by Tamsoft, but you can think of it as Senran Kagura with a different story and art style. And yes, about the same amount of fan service. They play very similarly, and uh, this game can be had on the PlayStation Vita or on PC. Whether you're into the Fate series or not, Fate X Stella The Umbral Star is a pretty decent hack and slash game. This one's a bit more like a traditional Dynasty Warrior experience. Uh, in other words, there's different zones around the map you can take over. Of course, the opponents can do the same thing back. I don't really know anything about the Fate series except for having watched Prisma Ilya, but I enjoyed it a lot, so you might too. It's smooth to play and it's pretty satisfying to slice through the waves of enemies. Fate Stella can be found on the Vita, PS4, PC, and Switch, so a lot of different consoles there. Akiba's Trip is worth looking at too. It's got a pretty ridiculous story. You get turned into some sort of weird flavor of vampire who can go out during the day, you know, as long as they have clothing on. If your enemies manage to strip you off your clothes, then it's lights out. Since your enemies are your own kind, you have to do the same. Yes, in this game, the objective is to rip your enemies' clothes off. It's clunky to control, but it's kind of fun because of it. The art style, including the menu and even the loading screens, have a real interesting look to them. 
The game takes place in Akihabara, and apparently the version in the game is a pretty good representation of the real deal. You can also spot various cameos and references in the background, including Neptunia. The character art might look familiar to people who've watched the Monogatari series anime, and perhaps some other works as well, since the art is done by Akio Watanabe. It's not the most refined game ever, but some of you might find it enjoyable. Here's a bit of a different kind of recommendation, it's a bit farther down the branch of hack and slashers, if you will. And while it's not that comparable to Neptunia, it takes the box in terms of being unique. This game is called Muramasa, and while it's still a hack and slash game, it's also two-dimensional and includes some platforming elements. This game was the subject of my first video ever. What you see here is footage recorded in 2012, when I didn't even have a name for this channel yet. Vanillaware is one of those companies I have immense respect for. They haven't made that many games, but then again, none of their games have ever felt bad to play or unrefined. And not to mention, they all look beautiful with their art style. Muramasa follows the story of two characters across an artistic representation of Edo period Japan. It's action-filled, yet is easy to get a hang of. It's not frustrating, since you can just try again if you die, and I also believe that the difficulty curve is just right for most people. If not, you can always choose a higher or lower difficulty setting. The game came out on the Nintendo Wii first, but later had a remake on the Vita. Hyper Devotion Noir is a strategy RPG, and currently it's the only one in the series to be one. While I did like the game, there are better alternatives, even if the genre isn't the most populated place ever. The one that comes to mind immediately in terms of being an alternative is Disgaea. It doesn't really matter which one, to be honest. There might be a few reasons why you'd prefer one over the other, though. I covered all of that in a different video, so I don't think I really need to go on about it in too much detail. Compared to Hyper Devotion, Disgaea is so much deeper. It's also a lot smoother and nicer to control. Comparatively, Hyper Devotion just feels really slow. I think a lot of folks will enjoy the various storylines of the Disgaea games. There's a lot of silly shenanigans and some more serious moments here and there. It's not super fan y but it's there with some characters having rather skimpy outfits. There are six Disgaea games overall, and they can be found on every PlayStation system since the PS2, as well as a few Nintendo systems and also on the PC. Disgaea is often described as Final Fantasy Tactics on steroids, so some of you might want to give that game a look. Especially if the Final Fantasy connection is something that appeals to you. I haven't played it, but I thought it would be a good idea to mention that it exists. I'm also just going to mention Valkyria Chronicles in here as well. Technically, it is a strategy RPG, despite how different it is to other games in the genre. There isn't a grid at all, but hey, it's still a strategy game. I show Valkyria Chronicles gameplay, you know, relatively frequently in some of my videos, and I see a lot of comments asking, what's that game with the army girl and the tanks? This also happens with Senran Kagura, by the way. What's that game with the ninja girl with the big boobs? I've done a few videos on Valkyria Chronicles, but for those who don't know, it's an alternate reality World War II strategy RPG with real-time elements. I'll put a card up on the top right if you want to know more about the franchise. Alright, now we're at the last category, which is mainly made up of fanservice games. I say mainly, but as I'm looking at this, it's all fanservice. So if a game's sexiness factor is important to you, this is the part of the video you've been waiting for. The first game we're going to look at here is uh, Sony Komi, or Sony Komi, I'm not really sure how that's pronounced. But believe it or not, it's a shooting game featuring Super Sonico, who is a pretty popular character. You might have seen some merch with this character on it, as well as some figures. Sonicomi is short for Sonico Communication, or something along those lines. Basically, Sonico is making her modeling debut, and you happen to be her photographer. And what you do is take pictures, of course. I thought this game was going to be a disaster to control, but it's actually really smooth and responsive. You can move freely with WASD and the mouse. The shooting sections, let's just call them that, uh, are generally fun and can get really hectic. I was surprised because I thought it'd be much more of a gimmicky game. There's also a visual novel aspect with multiple endings, so people who like the simulation aspect of producing perfection might fight something like that here as well. And you can get this game at Steam. Next up is a rail shooter called Galgun Double Piece. There's other games in the series, but this is the one I've got experience with. The premise of this game is pretty funny. 
due to some strange mistake, the main character ends up a literal chig magnet, and every girl in the school starts chasing him. Your only weapon is something called a pheromone shot, which, well, you take a guess what kind of effect it has. I thought it was a really funny game overall. I'm impressed with some of the details, like the fact that every girl in the game has their own name, like they all have their own identity. There are multiple endings, and uh, which one you get depends on what your responses are during dialogue sections. There's some mini games you have to do here and there, which of course have a fan service slant. It's available on PS4, Vita, and PC. This is the second game in the series, but the first one to be released in the West. And there's a follow-up game also called Galgun 2. And I think Galgun VR, I have no idea what that is. I didn't look it up. Up next is Moero Chronicle. It's a dungeon crawler. You may have heard about this game's rubbing mechanics. It's quite infamous for it. The game is decently challenging and isn't bad at all, even if you ignore the fanservice gimmick. It's available on Steam, and while it's not been released in the West on the Vita, you can get the Asian region version, which is in English. It wouldn't be right to talk about fanservice dungeon crawlers without even mentioning Sakura Dungeon. It's not as deep as Moero Chronicle, though, in terms of gameplay, which I think is overall a better game, but it's still worth checking out. I should mention that there is an 18 plus version of it, but I think that's an unnecessary warning since nobody buys the 18 plus version by accident. This is not a console game and it's only available for the PC. If you're looking for a bit of an interactive experience, let's say, consider Senran Kagura Reflections for the Switch. It's not exactly the most substantial in terms of content. You only get to interact with one girl and um, there's like a few different dream sequences or scenarios, plus some sort of touchy-feely mini games using various, I don't know, tools, let's just call them that. You can buy other characters as well as clothes in the uh, Nintendo eShop. This game is a Switch exclusive, so that's where you can find that. The next game I could have mentioned during the hack and slash section, but I decided to just leave it until now. It's Senran Kagura Peach Beach Splash, in a way, it still plays like a beat-em-up, just with water guns. Obviously, you can see what kind of fan service situations you can find yourself in in this game. Not only was the game fun, I actually really liked writing the script for the review I did for PBS. Ever since the game was announced and I found out that you can ch uh, change the watercolor to yellow, I had that R. Kelly simulator line ready to go. It first came out on the PS4. Not sure how well that would go over these days with Sony's new policies. Um, but there's also a PC version too, which runs a bit smoother. I highly recommend it. It's one of those spin-off games that somehow manages to be as good as a mainline game, in my opinion, at least. All right, this is my list of recommendations for some Neptunia alternatives. I'll admit this list is a bit interesting. I know there are other games that people would probably recommend as Neptunia alternatives, but I think it's important to talk about games I actually have experience with. It's like this with basically every list video I make. I know that I exclude some well-known games that often leads to a few more than average dislikes, but I'm okay with that because I'd rather do this than BS my way through videos. Doing research and then pretending to know about games that I never touched or have no interest in is just not a genuine approach. Hopefully you found some games that you're going to look at or play. Let me know if there's anything you personally recommend if it's not in this video. Remember to like the video if you did, subscribe if you want to see more. You can also support the channel directly by becoming a Patreon supporter or clicking the join button below for a channel membership. Remember, there's a second channel as well. And uh, well, you can see all the stuff in the uh, probably on screen as well as in the comments or not comments, the description rather, sorry. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.